Kenneth Unaiwu. I created this application called My PayView Escrow Service. My PayView is an escrow application developed to act as a third party that collects old and release funds between a buyer and a seller when their business deeds are satisfied. I created this application to increase the assurance of payment in a business transaction deed. How this work? Uh, as a user, you are meant to create an account with my PayView Escrow uh, service. Then you start a new transaction. Either a buyer or a seller can start a new transaction. Then both the buyer and the seller have to agree on the transaction terms and condition before the transaction will be in progress. The buyer funds the account to my PayView secured escrow account. Then the seller delivers the item to the buyer and the buyer is spared and verified that the goods have been received in good hands. Then my PayView releases the funds to the seller when he requests for the fund. So I'm going to illustrate as a user to create an account with my PayView. So you just simply click on create an account. So you fill in your information, this is your email address, your phone number, and your password. Let me assume this person's email address is this, and uh, the phone number is uh, this, and let me give you a password. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll create the account. As soon as you click on create account, you get an email notification to activate your account. So your account has been created successfully. Please check your mail and click on activation link to activate your account before logging in. So you go to your email, uh, an auto-generated message will be sent to you. And when you click on it, you just open the link. And as soon as you open the link, the link has a token in it. And uh, this token is going to activate your account. As you can see, the account has been activated successfully. Please sign into your dashboard to proceed. So this user can sign into his dashboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is all for this user. So as you can see, this user has not verified his account. He only signed into his dashboard, meaning he cannot do any transaction deeds. Assuming this user go to the transaction dashboard and click on a new transaction and click on maybe as a buyer, it's going to tell you that your access is denied. Verify your account to start a new transaction. So this user has to verify his account by filling in his uh, complete information, which is the name. Let me assume this user name is uh, Jane, and uh, the last name is Osen. Then uh, you have to provide your residential address. Let me say this user is staying at say 2, and select the state, F FCT. And you can see that the local government is auto populated. I achieved this using Ajax technology. So you can select the, the local government area that is from, then the user can browse to choose a profile picture and you submit. As soon as you submit, your account has been updated successfully. And you can see by the uh, left side of your screen that the account is verified. So this is one user. I have to quickly create another user, which will be either a buyer or a seller also, to demonstrate this application. So I'll create a user on my other browser uh, with phone number and uh, I click on create user. A message will also be sent to this user to activate his account. So. Let's just wait for that message. Okay, the account has been created. So, assuming this user did not activate his account and he proceed to log into his account with the correct information, the system will tell you that your account is not activated. Please check your email address or you can click here to resend that official link. So, uh, since the link is already sent, let me go to the email and uh, I guess this should be the email and I click on 
a link here. I can't activate it successfully. So I'll proceed to log in this user to verify his account so that they can start a business day. I'll verify your account. Um, can I? Can I? Special address now to be Lagos. Let me see this. Lagos. Ikeja. Okay, I choose the profile picture for this user. And I click on submit. So this user account has been verified. So let me assume this user I want to start a new transaction with. Um, this user should be, let me say this user is a buyer and you want to start a new transaction with a seller. So you just simply click on start a new transaction and you click on buyer. You, you uh, provide your seller information, which is the partner ID. So you can, I can go back to the seller and you can see that the seller ID here is uh, 100008. And I'm going to provide it here. One zero 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 eight. So as soon as I, as soon as you type it, you see the seller name to confirm to verify that the seller, to verify that the seller, uh, the partner ID you provided is, it belongs to this particular user. So I will select the duration of the transaction, which is let me say this transaction is for one to three days, and I'm going to add a product to this transaction. So I click on add product that is a, let me say it's an electronics and uh, I'll select uh, some, choose some cell phone, assume they are, they are dealing on phone and uh, uh, let me say, okay. So the first uh, transaction is, uh, the first product is a phone and let me say it's a, a Samsung phone, let's say it's a Galaxy, Galaxy 8, uh, red color, the quantity one, and the amount, let's say it's about 150,000 error. And I click on add. So you can see that on this part of the screen, the add keep on increasing. You can add up to a maximum of five products to this particular transaction. So let me assume I'm adding another one which might be a food stuff. Let me say it's a, it's a, a bag of rice. And uh, product description, uh, one bag of rice. So the quantity, let's say it's two, uh, okay, let me, let me say it's two bag of rice. And the quantity is two, the amount is about 30,000 Naira. I click on add. I can also add another product if I wish to. Let me say I'm adding a vehicle uh, product name. Let me say the Camry 2.1 or 2.2. Let me say it's a, it's a white color. The quantity is one. The price is, uh, let me say it's about 400,000 Naira. Uh, and uh, these are the products. I can also keep on adding if I want to, but you can also choose to delete a product before, if, if, you, if you think that this product is not suitable for this transaction. So if I choose to delete the vehicle that I just added, you can see that the amount of product have dropped back to two, and I can proceed to click on save. As soon as I click on save, it gives me a notification here that the product have been, the product have been, saved, have been saved, complete transaction invoice to proceed the transaction. So if I should scroll down, this is my transaction invoice, and you can see the transaction details, the duration, the date, and uh, you can see here that there is a my pay view fee, which is the escrow fee for this particular transaction as a middleman party to this transaction. So this fee is generated from a formula which you can click here to view the uh, my escrow fee calculator. So if you view the fee, you can see the range, which is about from zero naira to less than 2 million era is about 2%, 2 million to less than 10 million is about 50,000 era plus 0.5% of that particular, the total product. And over 10 million era is just 1%. This is a pseudo uh, uh, details provided. The admin can actually choose to edit all this information here. So if this, uh, this is the buyer, so 
this is the buyer and the buyer can proceed but let me go to the seller side to see what the seller can view on this particular transaction so if this seller should go to let me reload this page and you see that this seller actually got an alert that he have a new transaction this seller now can go back and view open transaction for this particular seller if i click on it i can see the transaction here i click here to view the transaction i can see the whole of it here so this seller can actually uh, decide to decline the transaction or he can wait for the buyer to approve the transaction before it proceeds. Because both of them have to agree upon the transaction before a transaction can be established. So let me go back to the buyer and agree on this transaction and submit for approval. So he said uh, you will be notified when you, your partner accepts the business plan. So I go back to the partner, I refresh the page. Okay, so you see the transaction ID have already changed, they have already been approved so that you can't see that transaction there anymore. So you have to go back there and click on it. So the uh, the seller cannot see the transaction details and he can click on I agree with the terms and condition of this transaction to proceed. So if the seller decides to agree uh, with the terms and condition and proceed with this transaction, then an email will be sent to the buyer to proceed to make payments for each transaction. So if I should go back to the buyer uh, and I check the mail of this buyer, this buyer received an email. We say you are required to complete the process, the payment process of each transaction with this particular amount of payment, the, uh, the transaction fee here. So the buyer can go back to the transaction. Uh, if I should refresh this buyer page, uh, you can see that this transaction actually moved from open transaction to penny transaction. So the buyer can click on penny transaction and view the transaction. As soon as you view the transaction there, you will see that you can see proceed to payment. So let's see what the seller can see on this particular page. If I should refresh the seller page. And I go to it. the transaction actually move from open transaction also to penny transaction. So if you click on a transaction and view the, the transaction, the seller cannot pay for a transaction, so it cannot see the proceed to make payment button on this particular page. So I will go back to the buyer and I will click proceed to pay. So I'm using a pay stack testing environment for the payment process. So I'm going to use their test card to make the payment of this transaction. So let assume the transaction is a successful transaction and I place and I make the payment of this transaction. So as soon as you make the payment, the transaction is going to be updated and the message will be sent to the seller to proceed to deliver, to send to ship the product to the buyer. So if I should go back to the seller email address, I should get a message telling the seller that a payment of this amount for this for the transaction ID of this has been received by my PayView Secure Escrow account. You cannot proceed with the shipment of the product to your business partner. So uh, that is what the seller should receive. So in the next video, I'll be sharing with you more features on this uh, application. And uh, this application is actually designed using uh, HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap for my front end. Then the database I use is my SQL. And the server side, I use uh, Python with a uh, uh, flat framework. Then uh, uh, Ajax, JavaScript, and jQuery. Thank you very much.